200 gigabytes later, these were the steps I took to daily vlog my time in Tokyo. <laughs> Yeah, I landed three hours ago and I wrote this entire concept up on my flight over. But I'm so excited to share this that the second I landed, threw all my bags down, I had to set up the studio and get ready to go for this video because I'm excited about this one. I still have a little bit of like a production high from daily vlogging my time in Tokyo and putting out five videos in five days. So for me, the most important thing was that this was a challenge. It was a challenge for me to do something like this. It's something I haven't done in a long, long time and something I was really looking forward to doing. And Tokyo seemed like the perfect possibility and opportunity to do that. It was a challenge of adventure, it was a challenge of story, and finally it was a challenge of flexibility, probably the most important part of the challenge. So the first thing I wanna talk about is the plan. You gotta throw the plan away. Just get rid of the plan altogether. When I originally concepted this trip and what I was gonna do and that I was daily vlogging, I had every day planned out to the hour. I had every location I was gonna go. I had every basically time I was gonna catch a train. I had all of it planned out. And from past experience, I knew that that was me setting myself up ultimately for disappointment and or failure. So what did I do? I removed those barriers. Remove the barriers of disappointment and failure by basically letting yourself loose from a plan. Because we all know when you're on a vacation, when you're on a trip, things don't go as planned and you kind of freestyle it a lot of times and you have to accept that for what it is. On this trip, flexibility was my best friend. It was the only way I was able to get the things I wanted to get done, but also have the freedom to really see where the day takes me and basically grow the story that way. The unknown is such an important thing and with leaving flexibility, you get the unknown. Plus the unknown is what makes the story special. That's really the best parts of all five episodes was that unknown aspect. For example, I didn't wake up when I went on the bullet train at Kyoto thinking I was gonna get two of the greatest pictures in my lifetime I've ever captured, that of Mount Fuji. I did not plan that. And because I was able to get that, because the only plan I had in the day was to go to Kyoto, I was able to basically carve the story into how I captured the perfect photos for me, some bucket list shots. And that ended up being a driving tool within the episode. And that was not planned at all. That was all freestyle. I decided for me, the best way to approach each day was give myself one task, give myself one thing to do. And I had to get that thing done because that got me to that one location. And then from there, you kind of find yourself in a rhythm, find yourself in a role. And then that sprouts out to so many other places, so many other things, and so many other experiences. For example, like I said earlier, my task one day was to go to Kyoto. My task one day was to go to Shibuya. My task one day was to go to Shinjuku at night. I had all of these tasks planned, one thing each day, and it led to so many other things. Let's talk about the edit. The edit, in my opinion, and kind of what I learned is the most important aspect of this process. You find yourself moved away and more removed from what, in my opinion, is the most crucial aspect in production, that being the pre-production. You completely eliminate that when you're daily vlogging, and there's a curse in that, but there's also a beauty in that. You become the editor, you become the director, you become the DP, you become all of it. You become the production itself. You become every aspect of a crew. And what's important is you have to think through the lens of each of those roles, no pun intended. You have to set yourself up in the day for the edit later. Let me break that down a little bit. Open in each location, close out in each location. Think of it as a little mini movie inside of the entire movie. So you have to have all of those points when you go in the edit, you have so many things to pull. You have to make sure your B-roll has a mixture of frame rates. You wanna be able to show the emotion if you want sound with it at 23975. If you wanna show the emotion of the hustle bustle of the city at 60 frames per second. If you wanna show the movement of like a train at 120 frames per second, you wanna have multiple frame rates and you wanna be thinking about that when you're going throughout doing whatever you're doing throughout the day. Think of how this frame rate would play in an edit. And then the most important thing, which is the hardest thing is redo things. Think of it as a film set. Think of it as if you don't like the take, if you're not comfortable with the take, if you know it's not the best take, don't think I'll fix this in the edit later. Make sure you get the take. It takes extra time. It might be a little bit more awkward, but I promise you, you will thank yourself later on in the day, later on in the week, whenever you're doing this edit, that you took the time to do the takes it took to get the shot you ultimately wanted. And then just capture. It sounds easier than it is, but if you think you might wanna capture it, just capture it. 
You might use it, you might not use it, but you have the option, you have the flexibility. And for all you know, it might lead you into other points. It might be transition points into other points. It might be supporting points that you need in your edit. So when in doubt and you wanna capture, just capture. Next up is the commitment. And for me, this was the most intimidating process of the entire thing. The commitment to yourself is the barrier of reliability. The hardest part of this whole thing is getting started and going. But once you commit and you get going, it is addicting. It is addicting and you don't want to stop. And that is part of the commitment. It plays a role later on. So as the commitment is hard, it is also the one piece of the aspect that moves you from day to day. It's the one piece that keeps you going, keeps you motivated and keeps you driven. What the commitment does is it keeps you up late trying to get that edit done, trying to get that edit in the perfect place. It keeps you up in the morning or the middle of the night playing with crappy hotel Wi-Fi just to make sure you meet your own personal deadlines. It's not about the views, it's not about the comments, it's not about any of that. It's about the ability to be able to look back and have like a visual scrapbook of what this trip was, what this trip meant to me, and what I want the world to see this trip as. I mean, I love that. I like get goosebumps talking about that, the fact that this camera, these cameras right here, can take an experience and have it live on for the rest of my life and, I mean, years after me. And that's what's beautiful about being able to tell these types of stories in this type of way. And then finally, the goal. How do you get your personality to be the driving tool? That's the hardest part. You have to kind of let yourself be yourself. And that's what separates you from every other creator doing something similar, doing the same thing. Nobody has the same personality as you. It's that simple. You're able to practice storytelling. You're able to practice cinematography. Yes, cinematography, playing with lines, playing with angles, playing with shutter speeds, playing playing with different frame rates. All of those things plays a role in the cinematography. Playing with the lighting and the shadows, hitting different moments. You're able to really focus in on that. I mean, an example of that is Go Watch Day 3. Everything was shot in a tripod. Everything was using the rule of thirds. Everything was shot at 23975. Everything was shot with that in mind. And that's just me practicing, ultimately, the cinematography I'm trying to just become better at. And the only way you get better at these things in this field and this stuff is practice. You can learn, you can watch, you can do all those things, but if you don't go out and practice it, it's just like a sport, you're not gonna get better. And creating and being a creative is like a sport. Behind every shot, there's a reason why you're doing it. And when you go day in and day out and figure out why you're shooting things, how you're shooting things, and you figure out the reason why, it makes it a lot easier to go back in the edit and plug it in there and have the reason why. It makes it flow better. And that's ultimately how the storytelling, the cinematography and all that stuff is practiced to come together as one. Some might call these types of things a vacation, but it's not. I mean, I might not be working in all those things, but I'm sharpening a skill. Every single day, I'm sharpening a skill, I'm getting better at something, and I'm trying something new. And for me, that's what makes a vacation fun. And that's what makes basically making films and making movies. That's what makes it fun is the fact that you're constantly learning, constantly teaching yourself and just constantly learning from the outside world and others. And I think that's such a beautiful thing within the realm of this process. I receive feedback throughout it. I receive feedback from those closest to me. I receive feedback from people on the outside. And there was one piece of feedback that stuck with me after my first video. And I think it's something that I needed to focus on and I didn't know was something that I did until I did it. And it opened up so many opportunities for me later on. My first episode, I was told that it was me talking about a vlog in a vlog. And that was something that was hard to follow along. It was something that kind of took away from what the day was and always brought it back to the fact that I'm making this video. And that pulled away from the idea of this is my day, this is my life, and this is how I'm capturing it. It pulled away and it made it not look like from my point of view, but it made it look like the outside kind of looking in from me. That might not make the most sense, but for me, it clicked. It clicked that I didn't need to justify that I was making a vlog. All I needed to do was show my life in the way I wanted shown in the most cinematic way and letting my personality be the driving tool of these videos. Would I do this again? Probably not. I burned myself out. But that's me looking back at it, not even one day removed. If someone said, hey, do you wanna go to Europe tomorrow? 
I'd daily vlog the whole thing all over again in the snap of a finger. I mean, here I am right now creating an entire video the day after I just did five videos in a row. I mean, I am a little crazy, but that's what love for something and passion does is it makes you a little crazy. That's just what it is. But hey, we're back in Seattle. We're back in Washington. We're back to the regular scheduled content and I can't wait to make some more videos. Peace.